A $398 mountain bike from Walmart with big wheels, 29 by 2.60 tires, a modern frame with a tapered head tube, even a one by drivetrain that has a cassette. I'm talking about the Schwinn Axum, a bike that I recently reviewed and a bike that me and a few others have even slightly abused. And it's not just me, lots of people are talking about and buying the Schwinn Axum. But some have mentioned a recent price increase to $498, well that's not what's happening. Because there's more than one Axum. There's a new blue one. It's all that we loved about the previous model, plus a bonus. And it's called the Axum DP. DP because this version comes with a factory equipped dropper post. Yeah, Walmart now sells a bike with a dropper post for under $500. A fair question would be, is this the same bike with an addition, or did they sacrifice some features to meet a price point? Let's take a look. We'll start with the 720mm, 31.8 diameter flat bars with lock-on grips and a trigger shifter, all the same. But on the left side of the bars is the new remote for operating the dropper post along with its cabling which routes down the down tube into the same access that's made into the standard axle. There's an identical stem, though for the DP there's no gold spacer, an all black stack. Tapered head tube, present and accounted for. Along with the suspension fork with its preload control, manual lockout, and 100 millimeters of travel. And it wouldn't be an axum without the big 29 by 2.60 tires and those big wheels, 35 millimeter rims. Still has the mechanical disc brakes with a 180 millimeter rotor up front and 160 at the rear. And let me clarify something here, I've seen it mentioned that the Axum has a rear through axle and that's not accurate, it's a standard quick release. Like its namesake, the DP has a one by drivetrain with a 30 tooth chain ring, an axe rear derailleur, and an 8 speed 11 to 40 tooth cassette. But the chain, no gold. Silver here, this is cosmetic only because they went with metal flake that's silver in the paint. And that new finish, which depending upon the light, goes from matte to metallic, blue to purple. There are light blues to deep blues, purple that goes from dark to more vibrant. It's very dynamic, though from a distance it's usually subdued. The regular Axum was already a great bike. And you add a dropper seat post to that, and does it make it worth the extra money? Well, let me show you the component they included. The branding is Exaform, I think I'm saying that properly, and the sizing 30.9 by 395. And installing it, very simple. The connection point is for a standard mountain bike cable with the barrel end. No fancy tools required, nothing more than fingers. First, I'm going to remove the reflector because the post won't seat properly if that's left in place. Then I'm going to pull the pre-routed cable up and out of the seat tube just enough to have something to work with. Then I'm going to insert the barrel end of the cable into the dropper's connector. It slides in sideways. There's a channel for the cable to sit in when the barrel is in its proper place. There's not much muscle involved in this installation, but there is a bit of tugging on the cable housing. Enough to pull it down so it can be seated into the bottom of the post assembly. And then the easiest part, sliding the dropper post into the seat tube. Note that as it inserts, I'm pulling the slack from the cable housing, and it all goes right into place, held firm by securing the seat post clamp. As I said, simple and easy, and here's where I was pulling the cable as I was installing. The bike comes with an owner's manual, but there's no mention of the dropper post in it. In the accessory box, however, there are actually two user manuals. Both for the dropper post, and the first is KS branded. The other one, Exaform branded. I think Exaform is a KS brand, I'll talk more about that in a bit. For now, just know that that's all it took to get the dropper post up and running, and mine was perfectly adjusted out of the box. And now is the part where I usually talk about how a bike rides, but if you've watched the original Axum review, and you should have by now, then you'll know this one's just like the other, just with a dropper post. Same geometry, same big wheels rolling over everything. But as far as the dropper edition, now I've never been a dropper post kind of guy. I mean, years of riding without one, I've only had a bike or two with them, and to me it was more of a novelty. But for this video, I forced myself to use one, and I'm rapidly becoming a fan. It turns out that being able to move around with the saddle not in the way equals a far more confidence-inspiring ride. Even on climbs, I'm finding it easier with the seat dropped, because it's not digging into my backside if there's an obstacle I have to work around. Now, I struggled with how I was going to relay this on camera, because it's just me, a GoPro, and a tripod. And this is what I came up with. There's a ditch that I regularly ride through on the warm-up loop, and nothing looks steep on camera, but here you can see, hopefully, that it's taller than the bike and somewhat vertical. 
Here's the benefit. Going into the obstacle, I can drop the post. Then take the obstacle and then raise after while continuing with the standard ride motions. Drop, conquer, then raise. See how fluid that is? I also discovered that for cases like this bike where the 19 inch frame is right at the peak of my comfort level, I can use the dropper to easily mount and dismount the bike. A simple push of the button and I'm flat footing it. And the transition from flat foot to normal riding height, remote press, and done. And I found other perks, like when pushing the bike up hills I'm too out of shape to climb thanks to 8 plus quarantine pounds, variable assist handle, and at points, a rest bench. All kidding aside, there's lots to this, and now I'm liking the idea of a dropper on bikes that have internal cable routing. It really does make a difference in my ability to be where I want to be as I maneuver a bike. Along with myself, there are three others that have ridden my standard Axum, and we all have the same observation. It's a capable bike out of the box, and fun to ride. And this new DP model with the dropper post, it takes everything that was good about the Axum already and adds to that. All things considered, even the factory suspension's not that bad. Go to a local bike shop with four or five hundred dollars in your hand and you'll see suspensions of the same caliber but usually with less travel. And I think this is a good combo because remember the original Axum already has provisioning to bring your own dropper. I was able to find Exaform droppers online and KS branded droppers online, some that had the same profile but none that were 395, I only found 385s. But I did see that the roughly comparable models were between $112 and $130, making the $100 of additional pricing for this DP model a good deal. And I'm already being asked if the remote and the dropper feel solid. Well the remote, solid enough, and the dropper, quick and smooth. Smooth enough for some cinematic seat raisings. Now, I'm not a dropper post expert, but this does not look or feel cheap in any way to me. Plus, if you're someone that shares a bike or someone else just wants to ride yours, you don't have to worry about trying to find that sweet spot again with a seat post and a quick release clamp. Everyone can pick their height and ride comfortably, and when you get your bike back, right back up to the top and you're good to go. The bike's color, that's a matter of personal preference. Both look great to me, but the blue, slightly more dynamic because it can change to purple under certain angles and certain lighting. Plus, blue is one of my favorite colors. Whichever finish, both Axum models, they're a new benchmark for features versus price, and for us big box bike shoppers, I think this is a compelling purchase decision that can hold some ground versus entry-level local bike shop offerings. Do you agree that these new Axoms are legit and that an Axom with a dropper post for under $500 is a big, big deal? Comment below and let me hear your thoughts and also which one would you pick, the standard Axom or this DP model? If you're new here, I hope you subscribe and that everyone has that notification bell active because it's the only way to get notified of new videos on this channel. I also have a Patreon and being a patron is as little as $2 a month and you get a free sticker, monthly giveaways, and a direct line to communicate with me. Patron or not, thanks to everyone for watching Kev Central and have a great day.